Hey, Internet friends, this is Magic Brad with The Magic Brad Show, and I've got uh, another special guest on today, and this is kind of fun because this is early in the morning here in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and it's late evening over there in Singapore is where this gentleman is from. I've known him for a long, long time, so I'm going to give a little bit of an introduction here. His name is Michael Podolinski, and I met him a while ago, and uh, he's been speaking and training for over 3,200 days on stage. He's spoken in 37 countries on seven continents. He's branded as the exponential growth expert. He's the author of several books with McGraw-Hill and Pearson Prentice Hall, among others. And he's a Speaker Hall of Fame awardee, Global Speaking Fellow, Certified Speaking Professional, Trainer of the Year, Star Trainer, Motivational Speaker of the Year, and also awarded Consumer Speaker of the Year, awarded by the Speakers Bureau. His new book, due out October 2020, is Take Back Your Life, and his keynote talk on the topic is Take Back Your Day. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and berries, please welcome my good friend, Michael Podolinski. How are you? Fantastic. Woohoo! Man, it's great to be on your morning show. Wow. Morning show and at night. And yeah, exactly. And you're looking fantastic. You, you never age. This is great. I feel pretty good. You know, I work out on Saturdays to do the martial arts thing and keep myself balanced and keep the left, right brain analy uh, active and such. So <laughs> good for you. Good for you. Martial arts has been one of my passions for decades as well. Well, you've been uh, doing this thing. I mean, we met quite a while ago. Um, you bought a trade show booth from me from. The, back back then, it's called the Great Minnesota Event Show, and you and right. bought a booth from that years ago at International Market Square. Do you remember those days? Oh, definitely, fun days. Now, and didn't it, you kind of get your speaking start, uh, sort of coming out in a white tuxedo, and you rip it off, and then you got your karate <laughs> uniform underneath? <laughs> yeah, I. And since I'd been doing martial arts since I was sixteen, I knew the philosophies of the martial arts. And I'd been in sales, so I was doing martial arts philosophies applied to sales and motivation. And, and I thought it'd be fun to uh, come out in a white tuxedo and you'd call the talk Montai Magic. Montai is a Japanese martial arts term for discipline. So it was the magic that discipline works in our lives. And I would rip off the tuxedo, reveal, do a kick, something, flying kick, something, and, uh, and then break boards at the end of the talk. And it was it was really entertaining, you know, I mean, people liked it, but I couldn't get serious business work. I, you know what it was, you know, it was so bizarre was, uh, you know, I, I'd be doing these gigs and, you know, and people were wanting to hire me for it. And I was excited about it. And then I, I had one day I asked, I, I, I called up on a job to see if I got it. And they said, I'm sorry, Mike, we gave it to somebody else. Oh, okay. Who was it? And they said, bingo, the clown. And, now, if I'm a substitute for Bingo the Clown, I got to get some real serious material and get rid of the, the, the fun stuff here. I mean, still put fun in the program, but get rid of the, the kind of presentation and, and come in in a suit and tie. I totally and that's when I started getting the business stuff. Being a magician, I totally get it. Let me switch you over to the other side here so I can get a better look. Switch oh, hey. Just like that. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> but being a magician, we get put into that position right now. Oh, do you do kitty birthday parties? And, you know, David Copperfield does kitty birthday parties, but I bet his fee is fairly significant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. know. I'm sure. I don't know if he has yeah. kitty birthday parties. So all that being done, what is it that you're doing now? Oh, well, uh, what I'm doing is our keynotes uh, for corporates and government uh, associations and doing short workshops, uh, like, you know, half days, full day, and then full days, two days, and even up to five days long. I can usually get those here in Singapore yet and much of Asia. Uh, and do strat plan meetings and uh, basically a little little coaching too because it's uh, people need extra guidance. And uh, so that's been a lot of fun and, uh, and really enjoying that. Well, didn't you do something just recently, like a, a two-day Zoom workshop? Ah. Yes, I, well, uh, you know, this COVID world, 
at January, I had a couple of great programs and I was really excited about it. And then I had 22 days of work on the calendar confirmed cancel because of COVID, which is always interesting. Uh, and then normally during that time period, I would have gotten another 24 engagements, but that didn't happen. So finally, August is when we got off what they call here circuit breaker, uh, you know, which is quarantine. And I, they had me come in at the Singapore Institute of Management where I've been working for 31 years. And I, I delivered my first two day Zoom meeting, two days. And uh, it, was, it was actually fun. You know, I, I've been kind of resisting because I love the face to face, that connection, you know, with the audience, but I, it was fun. Well, they can be fun uh, because they're they're different, I think. But still, you got to really have a skill to get that energy up. Because when you're on the stage, you can pace back and forth and go check out the left side and check out the right side, and yeah. you can be more animated. But when you're in this little box like this, you got to get your energy up for something like that. And you're you got to have some like um, cutting edge content that people are really really interested in. And and how can you get them involved? Is there some, are there some special techniques or something like that? Well, yeah, what I, I, the first day I was doing a lot of what I had seen uh, with doing polls and things, but then I realized people don't really learn from those because you, your polls are usually, okay, you got choice A, choice B, C, D, and the, oh, and then you go, oh, it looks like 40% uh, of you liked A and only 20% liked B. Uh, and 18% like C. And I'm like, so what? Uh, people say, yeah, I know where I'm at, but it's not really a learning. Uh, it's, yeah. it's a distraction that wakes people up. And while that may be good in and of itself, it's not a learning thing. So I thought, okay, we need something better. First going into it, I decided I was going to do things people said can't be done. I get people to stand up every 30 minutes and do a stretch break together and it ends up with a laugh. Uh, the laugh is the real uh, is the real break because that's what gets the uh, the chemicals up in the body and gets us all awake. And then also uh, hitting them with really solid content. I've been in some where in a in an hour's time you get maybe one idea, if that. And uh, so instead, I hit them with what I normally do is just a lot of usable tips, tips, tools, techniques, not theory. And I found people like that, you know, because it's, it's keeping, that's keeping them engaged. And then putting them into groups. And you can do that easily. You put them into groups and have them in the group before and then have them discuss and you give them the time to do it. <clears throat> they get opinions from everybody. They get to make real contributions. Then I come back, have the group sharing. Wow. And it's fun. We go, we do one group at a time. Have, oh, have you ever been in those programs? where they, you got six groups and they're all, they're all the same assignment. First group shares their 10 ideas. And uh, every, you know, oh, good, good, yeah, yeah. And then the next group, well, they took most of ours, we only got three left. And then, you know, they share uh, those three. And uh, the third group, well, there's only one that wasn't shared, this is ours, you know. And the other groups, well, they took all ours. Well, why are we even here, you know? Uh, so instead we do one per group. And as we go back a second time, when it starts to get to be like some kind of repetition, I said, well, you know, can we move on to the next? Okay, great. And then we're back into, into something new again. And having a break timer, you know, is really helpful. You know how you made your sounds there, you know, yeah. uh, and that's fun. And we, so we do the same thing with them, having them then stand and do something together and uh, wakes them up. I, we get a timer to do it. Well, you know, your, your colleague, Tony Robbins, he did a huge program and, you know, he's got that board breaking thing for confidence. Yeah. The package yeah. that he sent out to all the participants had a board in it that they could actually break live. So you got to do something to keep the audience engaged in this whole new world. And I was poking around. I saw something you had. It's called the uh, Feynman technique. And Feynman. What, what is that? Feynman. Okay. Well, uh, I want to get them remembering. And, and I've worked so hard on it because you work with people and, they, oh, they, they love it, great material, whatever, and they don't always use it. So right from the very beginning, I started with a, a list of 10 takeaways. 
And I, I promise them, look, if you're not getting 10 good takeaways out of this two day workshop, demand your money back. And I'm serious. You know, anybody that can't deliver 10 good ideas in two days shouldn't be doing what they're doing. Uh, <laughs> but I also say to them, you know, hey, uh, by the way, in two days of daydreaming, you ought to be able to come up with 10 good ideas. So part of the burden is, and the honest is on your own shoulders. You've got to be engaged. You can't be like a Zoom meeting. You can't be going in and out, in and out, and doing other things and multitasking because you're going you're gonna to lose at least 36% of the content and you're not going to be engaged at all. So right. uh, <clears throat> Feynman technique is a little, little different in that. I, I do these one to 10 lists and I, I put a safe, a picture of a safe and the, the word productivity on it. It's a productivity safe. So they actually write down what they're going to put in their safe and store it. We do a couple things in addition to find them. First of all, recalling. Um, just sitting and recalling for even 30 seconds helps to retain that information, helps to make it stick in their minds. If we just take and recall it, what did we actually just cover? So we stop throughout the program and give them a moment to do that, a minute. And then another minute writing things down. Uh, and then as we go through that, uh, the Feynman technique is, is then seeing how you could convince others of what you just learned. In other words, teach to somebody else, share this information. If you can't explain it well enough to teach somebody, you don't know it yet and you won't use it. So we, we use that as a, as a technique. And then finally, you know, just uh, repetition. And we ask them to keep the sheet in front of them 66 days. It's not 21 days. That was Maxwell Maltz's uh, axiom, but that was, he was a, what do you call it, a, a plastic surgeon. And so he said it was about 21 days when somebody started to get used to their new face or uh, used to not having a limb. But that's not habit. A lot of motivational speakers jumped on it. It's habit. You know? I see. It's, it's more getting used to It's the first part of the habit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. You got it. And then here it comes along 28 days. That's Alcoholics Anonymous, AA. And, you know, but, you know, what, 20 trying to get out of the habit. <laughs> well, 20% or better end up repeating. Uh, and, uh, and they get addicted to meetings. You know, that's, that's part of that, too. Uh, and so it's the latest research, small cohort, unfortunately, small cohort, uh, but 66 days on average to make a habit. Mm -hmm. That's 18 to 252 days in total. So some things are easy. You know, you want to do it. It's fun. 18 days and it's a habit. Uh, quitting smoking might be 252 because if you've been doing it a while, it takes takes a while to quit plus the addictive sure. property. So uh, it's really giving them something that they take back and use. And if they, if they keep that in front of them and tr use those ideas every day for 66 days, they create habit. And uh, I get people asking for a second and third sheet because as they're going through this, they're, they're realizing that they picked up more and more ideas. And uh, they, get, they get at least, at least 100% growth in productivity from the two days if they're using the ideas. So when you're putting all these things together, this is a, that's a lot of information for one thing, but I'm assuming you, you know, you're good, so people want to rehire you. You've got to come back. You've got to do some new stuff. So how do you keep your new ideas and your new things fresh? And you know? Oh, thank you. Uh, you know, I, an amazing woman that I met in 1982, she does videos. She's a humorist. She's amazing. She gets 6 million hits on YouTube. Jeannie Robertson. You got you to check her out. Okay. And what she said was so profound, I took note of it, and I've been using it ever since. And the simple thought was, Every time you do a program, every iteration of that program, you upgrade 5%, 5%, that's it, 5%. And it doesn't sound like much, but to change the slides, to upgrade with new content, to put in a different focus, to move material around where it matches better, to take things out, which is hard, because we fall in love with our stuff, but to take things out that were okay and replace it with something that was wow. Uh, and, but you do that 10 times in a year to one program, it's not 50% better, it's over 100%. But, you know, it's like cumulative interest. Mm -hmm. So it, it becomes a lot better. So I keep looking for new material to put in, what to take out, which is always the hardest part. And uh, also 
ways of keeping people engaged with it. Uh, different games, different activities. Uh, it, people sometimes give people short exams, little quizzes, and things like that. Uh, very few people that I know of love quizzes. They go, ooh, a quiz. Uh, yeah, it's it's usually not that much fun. <laughs> but, but I give them a crossword puzzle to solve in a group. Okay. okay. What is it? It's questions and answers. And they can solve it together. The first group to complete it uh, wins a prize. And then from there, you know, we go through it to make sure everybody has the answers. It's a sneaky review and they're working across from those. So there's a lot of ways of making it fun. It's just uh, putting some time and effort to change. Oh, by the way, with that, um, with that two day, two day workshop online in Zoom, uh, I was really thrilled with with the results because apparently it, it works all this that i've been doing live in programs actually works in virtual and uh i saw the, the evaluations that i got a four this is on a one to five scale uh 4.87 demonstrated competence in subject 4.87 able to communicate issues and concepts clearly and for uh, 4.79 program leaders effectiveness so to be able to do that with a two-day Zoom and keep people engaged, uh, it, it works. It's just make sh making sure that people are interacting as much as they can with other individuals, not just 30 of them on the screen. So here's another thought on that. Like you did a good job and then they want to have you back and you got to create something new. They might wonder, well, now if he's got something new, it's not what it was, so they might not be that confident. So what do you have in place to kind of, I guess, not guarantee, well, maybe guarantee to, to, so the companies come back and hire you over and over? Well, uh, first of all, I never throw the babe out with bathwater. You know I mean? They're, it's all focused on productivity. That's what I've been, been focusing on. And so the productivity, the exponential growth is, has been there. And it's just updating the material. Uh, not, I don't teach apps. Yeah, anybody can go to Google, one of the top 20 productivity apps of 2020. Uh, and what works for me probably wouldn't work for somebody who's in finance or somebody who's in a hospital or somebody who's uh, in engineering. They need something unique to themselves. Or even personalities. Different apps function with different personalities. Exactly. Personalities, habits. So I don't, I don't teach them that. Instead, I teach them to value their time and to appreciate what they're doing with companies organizations hospitals uh, i still guarantee uh the results are they owe me nothing and i wow. got that from a guy named joe welding in 82 and it's a simple process I, i've got a three-step process to make it work one is i want to do that because if you go to buy a car and you go go to start it and it doesn't doesn't work you think you'd be able to get your money back if it doesn't work so yeah whatever you do yeah, work exactly but a lot of people are afraid to do that. Uh, but I, I said, why? I don't want to take people's money if it's not good. Yeah. You know, it, it's not professional. So anyway, I, I, I ask HR, what do they want? And I got a five page client, client customization form. And it really helps a lot because now I know what HR is looking for. And I, I need to know, is this just a KPI or do you want to change behaviors? You know, I mean, it, I got to look at what they want. KPI. Why don't you explain what is a KPI? Oh, sorry. Um, key performance indicator, and these are like the top, the, the top four, five, six goals in an organization, and they they're very popular, particularly in, in Asia, but I think in most most organizations today. the The problem is it should be four, five, or six. <laughs> and I was working with um, the largest cement contractor, and the VP there who hired me. Uh, I asked him, how many KPIs you got in the program? He says, oh, I got six. And I said, oh, that's good. I said, it's a peak of the high end, but that's good. You know, he says, it's bad. What do you mean? Well, I, I got one uh, A, one B, one C, one D, one E, two A, two B, two C, two D, three A, B. And I said, that's terrible. That's over 22. He says, it's worse than that. I've got three bosses, each one with one A. Uh, and they should be all the same coordinated KPIs that they're working on, not a whole bunch of them. What's key about, about that? Uh, okay, but 
Uh, but in terms of the, the guarantee, one is HR. I'm sorry, I got sidetracked. Uh, it went on a <laughs> rabbit trail. Uh, the second one is uh, I want to survey each person who's going to attend. And if it's a group of 20, 30, I can send them an email survey, five simple questions, but it's, it's not choose A, B, C, D. It's uh, what are your top three problems with, okay? Your top three challenges. Uh, what are three things you would like to see in this program? What are three, and so forth. So I'm getting their input. It takes a long time to collate, but I'm not predetermining the input, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I find out what the group wants. If it's 8,500, I can't do that. That's the largest group I've worked with. Right. Then, then I can survey everybody in, in just a, a little format, uh, you know, survey monkey or something else. Uh, but at any rate, then I, I so I get that. The, the last thing I want to know, uh, I want to know from the person who's going to be the highest rank in the room and hopefully that person's boss, what they want. So if I know what the boss really wants, I can deliver, I can know HR wants, and if it's consistent with what the boss wants, I don't need to get the two of them to sit down and it, I can deliver. And then if it's delivering what the people in the program want, I can guarantee the result. But if I don't get any one of those, it's hard to guarantee because I'm shooting in the dark for somebody. So uh, another question I got, and this is one for everybody, I think, and I know that, uh, like, I'm really good at kind of shifting gears when I have to. I'm kind of like- Cool, I like that, I like that. Yep. So how has, I, I know COVID kind of hit me a little bit because all of a sudden I was in the event business and when COVID came, there is no event business. And I was like, oh, okay, now what am I gonna do? What, what, has, what have you done to kind of, Get around it or circumvent or pivot or make things work well uh a number of things one uh i decided to uh rewrite uh my business plan gave myself a uh 15 year business plan so that i'm looking bigger picture at things i uh, and i just talked last night to a, a buddy of ours mark leblanc oh sure I, i've been through some of his courses yeah and uh I hired Mark for the Minnesota Speakers Association back then, which became uh, NSA Minnesota, to be our executive director. He's amazing, amazing guy. And now he's consulting with uh, speakers and top leaders all over the world. Pretty, pretty neat guy. But he said he's committed the next 10 years to virtual. And I can see why, because he's thinking big picture and people are used to it and they're looking for it. They just need to be able to connect with it in a logical way, some way that's going to really help them out. And they need to listen to good people because the internet is loaded with experts that don't know what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, and, and and that's it's it's unfortunate, but I I was I was asked I was doing a setup for a TEDx program and one of the guys said, Oh you gotta see your product productivity guy, you gotta go and watch this guy. Oh he's amazing. And so I oh, Sure. So I went over, watched, and he said his statement was, goals don't work. I mean, that, <laughs> that kind of flies in the face of everything I've ever learned. And then I see he's been out of, out of school for a year and a half, and he hasn't gotten a job yet. He set a goal to get a job, and he didn't get a job, so go obviously goals don't work. He right. was his own case study. <laughs> uh, and these kids that are trying to set this program up, they never got it off the ground because they were kind of like this guy. Uh, it was from a, a junior college here and it didn't get, get off the ground because just setting it down is not sufficient. You gotta have an action plan to back it up and be consistent and, and you can't just jump around that enthusiastic, be enthusiastic, you know? You've gotta actually do some uh, roll up the sleeves and uh, elbow grease kind of work. And so I, there's a lot, out there that is maybe not the best of advice. So well, there's a lot of people are that are doing well this stuff so that um, they just jump right into it and they try and teach what they know and sometimes they haven't been there long enough to actually know it. Have something yeah. like you said, the goals don't work. I mean when you if you got a goal to get from from here to Los Angeles and you don't have a car you're gonna walk, your first yeah. goal is to take a first step. So the goals yeah. do work. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely you are you're testimony to that you, you do that and then you see when your business kind of went sideways because of covid you just went virtual with it and see for me i feel 
it's actually easier for me to do this because the, the speaking part here is pretty much the same. And what people need is not the talking head. Not, well, it's ha happy to be here today to uh, spend this time with you. And we will be covering, you know, they don't need that. They oh, need so some awesome. energy, some fun, some interactivity. Uh, and the reality is they will learn if they're stimulated, if the content's good, if uh, what's happening is changing their lives in some way. It's, uh, it, you know, for me to go and talk to people in other states and other countries, since I've been to 37 of them, I know the people, I know some, something about their language and their culture. It's easier than to go and bring them into a group and share something, a shared experience that will connect with them. And so the I'm, platforms, I think, are going to shift with the virtual thing. And to me, it's going to be sort of a hybrid parallel of a little bit online and eventually we'll get back to the live in-person stuff. So COVID, you know, you just got to deal with it. That's kind of what I'm done. Uh, I've just pivoted on to the online world and done it like this. This is kind of like we're at a coffee meeting. It's just yeah. a little different, you know? Very much so. Very much so. So uh, I, had a, I had another question because I was kind of curious I've known you for a long time, but we haven't talked for a long time. And I'm wondering, do you have any like notable successes? You know, I've got my event planner expo that I created back in the nineties and it was my baby, you know? And so that's one of my biggest claims to fame. And I've, I've never been on like America's got talent. Although I was on America's funniest people once, but I don't have a lot of those notable things. What kind of notable successes have you had in your career? Okay. Well, uh, for, uh, for about five years, it was actually six years. One year I couldn't make it. Uh, they had set the dates before they, before they called me. But uh, with PT Prudential Indonesia, that's where I've had my largest group of 8,500 in insurance agents. Tons of fun, by the way. They're on their feet screaming. It's kind of like being a rock star for a while. Uh, and then I, so I worked with them there five years in a row, and they grew 52.5% every year. Uh, so, I mean, that was, that was a really solid, good engagement and felt good about kicking off their year every year. They just believed that since it worked so well, then we keep that thing going. And I was, I was happy to do it. I've done, I think, over, over 45 programs for Prudential in Asia. So it's 90% uh, of the work ends up being repeat, which is, which is a good thing. Uh, for six years, I had a chance. I started with the Air Force... Uh, Singapore Air Force uh, trainers, and I was teaching them, and then started uh, work different groups within the Air Force, including then the Pialaba Air Base, and they wanted to win the Eagle Challenge, so we did a motivational thing, got it kicked off. They won the Eagle Challenge that year, and they brought me in five more years to keep keep winning, I guess. Uh, and I, I think a lot of it was their excellence in what they were doing, so I can't really take the credit. Uh, but I was honored to be part of that, a small part of that, to be able to do the motivational kickoff and get people fired up all over again. Mm -hmm. uh, once people win something, it's easy to become lethargic. So uh, the consistency, I think, helped them a little bit. I, I worked with a network marketing company for five years, doing keynotes and training. Uh, and they were growing 250% a year, a mega global. And uh, it ended up being like a spokesperson for them. And it was, it was just fun to work with them. And, and one year they asked me to do a custom made talk, just 15 minutes at an awards banquet. And so I came up with inspire desire. And if you desire it, you have desire in your heart, you can grab a whole, you know, one of those kind of, a, uh, <laughs> and, and they bought it the next year. I had, they had a half a dozen people from the country of Iran uh, fly in and that one guy had it memorized word for word, and it gave me the whole 15-minute speech. I'd forgotten about it because I custom wrote it for that program. Uh, but man, it was you know it, uh, one of those fun things. But obviously, that was that was helping them. That. That's got to be fun to have a fan, you know? Yeah, yeah, I got, I got, I got the one. You know? uh, now I don't, I don't always count the numbers on on Facebook and LinkedIn. We got. Uh, 10,000, but it, it's, it's not, it's not the same because they're not all, they're not all uh, raving fans. Uh, I, I worked with Leo Kusher 
at the Crown Prince Hotel, one of my first visits to Singapore. And uh, he's an amazing general manager. In fact, I did an article on, I had a column in, in uh, Hotel Asia Pacific Magazine, and I, I did a column on him and four other great GMs that I've had a chance to do some work with or got to know. And at any rate, he, we work at a property and GMs usually rotate every five years because more than five years, they stop seeing things. And so he brought, whenever he get to a new property and he had a reputation for cleaning them up and pro making them more profitable, he, he'd bring me along and I'd do a program for his uh, HODs, heads of departments. And so we do the same two day program. And, uh, but first I'd start with mystery guests. And that's always fun. Uh, just, you know, nobody knows who I am. I just come in and, and then I write six pages of information that he can use to go and uh, continue to improve the, improve the property. And it, it's, it's just been fun to be able to see the growth of these. One of them, I won't mention the name, uh, he went to and he said, Mike, I, I really need your help on this one. And I did the mystery guest and afterwards, before we were going to do the program, he announced that, that we're going to have a program and he's, he said, Mike, what do you think? Be honest. And I said, close this place for a month. Fire everybody and hire the 10% back. And you know who they are that are doing the job because I have never been in a property where they this asleep, the so laissez-faire, lackadaisical. And he, he goes, I told him, I told him, the owner the same thing except close it for six months. You know, because uh, he had a lot of other repairs and things to make. And it was funny because we're both on the same page and he was only there for eight months and he, he said, hasta la vista. Oh. Uh, they, they didn't want to change. They didn't want to change. They were just using this beautiful hotel to sell timeshares. So sure. that was kind of an unusual one. Uh, last maybe, uh, there's more, but I, last one here, Chris Kelway has become a good friend of mine. Uh, he was introduced to me through another, another buddy and uh, he attended my time management program in South Africa. And uh, he said, hey, could, do you have time on this trip to do it for my team? And we were able to work out the schedule. And yeah, so we did two days for him there and came back again the next year and did another one. And then um, the management program and another management program, virtual teams. And uh, we just became fast friends. So we travel different places in the world together, his family, my family. It's been, it's been fun. Uh, okay. And he really has moved up. He ended up running a, starting and running a, the largest uh, sale made for IBM in its history, SAB Miller Brewing uh, was his company and he started a $100 million division for IBM. And now, now he's got a couple of companies, he stepped away from IBM, he's got a couple of companies in Africa. And he's helping the half of the continent that doesn't have water or electricity get it. And uh, he's really helping people. It's amazing, amazing. Well, that's a, a lot of, uh, and you, you do a lot of these things. And I, I've thought about writing a book of some of the bizarre situations I had when I was doing magic full time. But let's, uh, why don't you give us one last one. What's the most unusual, unique, strange situation that, uh, that you've been in? What, what, what's the one that really stands out? Uh, well, maybe it, 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 unusual in the sense that most of the groups I work with, uh, you know, yeah, they can be government, they can be uh, hospitals, they can be uh, pharma, pharma companies, tech firms. Uh, but I think one of the most unusual ones was working with the United Nations for three days. And it was working with the UNICEF group and sharing uh, management principles and how to motivate people, delegation. And I refer to delegation as partnering with another others to, a, to achieve tasks and goals. And it, most people don't think of it as partnering, but it really is. It's, uh, it's, that, it's that counting on one another and not dumping work on, on people. So at any rate, we, we did that. And the results from the manager uh, who hired me to do this, uh, he just said, you know, it was really helpful for UNICEF and for the United Nations, and it made an impact on them. And uh, he talked to everybody who was at the meeting, and I was uh, a couple hundred, I think. And uh, they all agreed the same thing. They were glad they got the content and that 
they were, it was in a, in a fun, uh, involving manner. So, uh, yeah, working with the United Nations was one that stood out my my mind. You know, a lot of them blend into the woodwork uh, behind, but some just just stand out for something that you know I felt proud to be a part of it and to see that uh, they're they're open to making these kinds of changes. So. I guess mine, the most fun, I think, was I worked with a friend of mine, an actor, magician friend out in uh, Los Angeles, uh, Larry Anderson. And it was a uh -huh. magic series of VHS videos. It was called Jaw Droppers. It was how to do magic. And it was a lot of fun because we, we hit the street on the Third Street Promenade and did restaurant, bu restaurant buyouts and did a lot of stuff on TV. And it was an infomercial on, you know, on, on late night television and stuff. So that was a, that was a lot of fun. But, you know, it's nothing like being with the United Nations, but it's was fun. <laughs> well, hey, I wouldn't mind being on night court myself, but you know. <laughs> well, this wasn't, yeah. uh, this wasn't Harry Anderson. This was Larry Oh, not Anderson. Harry Anderson. But, but they do know each other very well. Oh, they do know each other. Excuse yeah. me. That's the first mistake I've ever made. Again. So Larry Anderson was on the Lucy show. He's on the $6 million man. He was on the magician. If you remember that with Bill Bixby. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, he was on the, uh, uh, a lot of infomercials with the George Foreman grill and stuff like that. Sure, 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 sure. Okay. Well, Michael, I've got your uh, domain here in case people want to get a hold of you right here, michaelpodolinsky.com if you want to spell cool. it. P-O-D-O-Linsky, linsky.com. And I'll uh, put that uh, in the recording, but are there other ways that people can reach you? You got social sure. media platforms and stuff? Well, uh, on LinkedIn and uh, also with Facebook, I, I've got those as well, and the YouTube. I've got a YouTube channel with some with some short videos on it. And I, yeah, and to, by the way, drop me a line if you just even have questions about uh, something related to productivity. And obviously, if you'd like to make your group more productive, you'd like to see uh, them literally double their productivity in a year, uh, then give us a call. We can see if we can arrange something and I'm happy to do it face to face, but I'm also very thrilled now to be able to do it online and to be able to use either StreamYard or Zoom or WebEx or whatever you happen to be using and uh, we'll make it make it work uh, well for you. It can work. There, are, Like I said, I've been looking at a lot of different ways to make events work online and there, there's some pretty fascinating platforms out there to be able to make this whole virtual world work Thanks well you. michael podolinski i appreciate you taking the time it's probably almost your bedtime over there i'm just getting started it's about 9 30 but i'm gonna work on this and get it beamed up to the internet and then i'll send you a copy maybe you can propagate it out there too and we'll get I'll it out to the that. world I'll do that hey brad it's good to, good to see you again and chat with you and uh man i'm, I'm thrilled that you're doing this and you, you're the perfect fit <laughs> it works I'll pop you back into the green room if you want to stick around. We'll have a chat later. Other than that, I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you Sounds very right. much. Thanks. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and berries, that was my friend from Minneapolis. That's where I originally met him, and now he's over on the other side of the planet, literally. On the other side, he's like, if I was to reach through, I can find him. <laughs> so this has been the Magic Brad Show. I appreciate you taking the time. Peace, love, and happiness. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much. Enjoy. Be safe, be kind, be nice, and be good. Okay, bye. See ya.